For the age of the Linux desktop to really blossom, there needs to be some kind of tech support solution that's available to people. And today, we're gonna take a look at what that initiative could look like. $900 bug bounty to whoever fixes the Lenovo Legion Pro 7 speakers on Linux. This has been posted in a number of Linux communities online and it's been gaining some momentum. We can see in the readme here that the creator of this tracker initially pledged $500 to get this problem fixed and several other people have thrown in some money as well. So what we're looking at here is essentially Libre tech support, crowdfunded tech support, which might be the perfect model for something like Linux because there really isn't any money going into Linux for having it supported in consumer hardware like laptops or especially gaming laptops like the Legion Pro 7. And when you do find examples of money being spent to have Linux better supported on consumer hardware, it's always a teeny tiny drop in the bucket compared to what companies like Microsoft are spending to have Windows supported on consumer hardware. And obviously that support is a big factor for getting users, especially new users and people who aren't passionate about tech to use your OS in the first place. Now, Linux does have some corporate sponsors, of course, but they're spending their money to fix bugs that serve their interest. And you've got to think that a company like Microsoft isn't going to want to shoot themselves in the foot by advancing the Linux desktop efforts. So the money for improvements coming from these companies probably goes more towards Linux as a server OS, which probably wouldn't bleed into something like sound support on a laptop. And even companies like Google that do create consumer hardware that runs something similar to Linux, like think of Chromebooks that are running Chrome OS, or even support for the Linux virtualization framework on Google's Pixel phones, Google is still going to spend money on getting their hardware supported and not Lenovo's. And so besides doing what this person did here, announcing to the world that you have a Linux problem and you are willing to pay to have it fixed, there isn't really any other kind of support that you can get for Linux, at least not at this price point. And at least not without picking a very specific Linux distribution to use. There are premium distros that you can buy, like Red Hat's Enterprise Linux that you can buy for a workstation, and this money goes towards a support package that's bundled in. There's also Zorin OS Pro, which offers a similar type of deal. Uh, they also have an array of software that uh, you can buy, and I assume that this software is tested on Linux and they can also help you with getting it installed or at least with getting it installed and working on Zorin OS. And of course, there's also some just general tech support that's included uh, with Zorin OS 18 Pro, especially for installing it. But as far as I know, there isn't really anyone that's providing broad spectrum support for Linux and for any distro. And honestly, something like that is probably impossible for a single company or at least a small company to support because of the broad range of configs that Linux supports or that Linux comes in. I mean, maybe you could get some third-party companies to support specific well-polished distros like Ubuntu. In fact, Best Buy's Geek Squad does technically support Ubuntu, but not any other Linux distro because Best Buy does sell at least one thin client desktop that I'm aware of, which comes with Ubuntu pre-installed, and Geek Squad is supposed to be able to offer some level of tech support for everything that Best Buy sells. Okay, that's how it's supposed to work, but these days, the Geek Squad precincts are probably still spending most of their time servicing iPhones because that's much more profitable than obscure thin client desktops that run Ubuntu. So we're left with the crowdsourced and crowdfunded tech support model like this here. And this current incarnation has some major hurdles to overcome. Um, so first and foremost, the fix for this here, it's, it's kind of a mix of software and hardware. And it's more complicated than just toggling a module parameter in your kernel. Right now, a developer has proposed a fix which involves 
patching the open sound firmware and the Linux kernel so that bass and internal subwoofers are loaded properly in order to avoid the tinny sound that the user is experiencing. That's the problem, a tinny sound. They have some kind of sound coming out, but it just doesn't sound good like it's supposed to on those laptop speakers. So patches for the issue have been proposed, but testing these patches is proving to be a real pain because this developer that's writing this code does not actually have a Legion Pro 7 for him to test the compiled code on, and buying one would actually cost more than double what the current bug bounty is, and that's assuming that this developer actually gets the bug bounty. So this dev has to go back and forth with the person who is managing this bug bounty who also has this laptop and has been testing new iterations of the code, which have been going back and forth for the past few days. And, you know, another question with this effort is, how many man hours is someone willing to contribute towards the solution? And this goes for everyone involved, right? It's not just the developer who's trying to make this patch. There's the person who's running this uh, repo, who's doing the testing. Maybe some other people are doing the testing because all these people who are pledging, I assume, have uh, this laptop or at least are just interested in getting this issue fixed on this particular laptop. Maybe they're planning on buying it in, in the future. So if we're talking just basic market value of labor, the $900 that's being proposed here might buy about a week or 20 to 40 man hours, depending on how much people value their time and how much they value contributing to open source projects and the notoriety that might come from doing all this. There's potentially a bit more to gain than just $900 from fixing this problem. And there's also the question of who gets credit for fixing this. Again, you would think that the developer would be the primary recipient of this bug bounty, but they don't have the laptop in question to test the fix. That's being taken up by uh, Nadim, the owner of this uh, Git repo and the highest pledge so far, offering up to $500. And since there's multiple pledgers, there could also be some disagreements amongst all of them on how these funds get distributed. And the main issue that I see with this particular crowdfunding setup is the fact that you have to send in a pull request to add an amount that you're going to pledge, which I think might filter a lot of Linux users or just people who want to contribute to this effort, but don't know how to do a pull request, or they don't even know what a pull request is, or maybe they simply don't want to use GitHub to do it because Microsoft owns it, uh, or maybe they don't want to use GitHub for some other reason, but pull to pledge is definitely an unorthodox way of handling this. It's an interesting one, but I think it's going to end up causing a bottleneck for funding here. And finally, if the problem does actually get patched, that patch needs to make its way upstream into the kernel itself, into sound open firmware, and any other parts of the sound stack that issues get found in. And those patches then have to be integrated into different distros since most people are not building their own kernels, they're using ones that are built by those maintainers. So there's a good chance that even if this problem does end up getting fixed, that most end users with these laptops are gonna have to go out of their way to manually patch their kernels and basically do a level of tinkering that they aren't gonna be that comfortable with. And by the time this patch is integrated into the more stable just works distros, this model of laptop might not even be that popular anymore. But despite all of these bumps and roadblocks in the project, I really do wish this project all the luck in the world and I hope to see more like it because the year of the Linux desktop might actually bring some new employment to Linux users or at the very least a little side hustle that they can do for some beer money and proving to all the haters that our hobby is actually useful. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% storewide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.